Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome into another episode of League Unlocked. My name is Eric Flynn, a little bit Han Solo on today's episode as we go through Week 5 Power Rankings in the LCS. Yes, you will see there's no LEC. It, it just gets a little complicated to do the rankings as we head into that group stage. G2 is obviously still at the tippity top. Vitality is still at the biggity bottom, and that's really all you need to know for the rankings, but we're going to give uh, the LEC a lot more attention when we hit global power rankings and things like that. But today it's LCS also because we didn't feel like, or at least I felt like, we didn't get to fully recap some of the weekend action. So we're going 10 to 1 in North America. And despite picking up a pair of wins, Immortals still sitting in that bottom spot uh, because FlyQuest did get a win against EG. Still have more hope and faith in FlyQuest than IMT, despite having the same record. And honestly, Immortals have been probably better than expected so far this year. Tactical has looked the best that he has in a couple of years. Bolulu is playing Belkaz and Vigar, all these, all these kind of off-meta picks that make them somewhat exciting to watch. And FlyQuest continues to be... One step in the right direction, two steps backwards as they uh, are honestly going to need a little bit of a miracle if they want to actually make top eight as we head into the final week. That's right. One week left in the LCS. FlyQuest basically needs to go two and one bare minimum, and that's with Dignitas or 100 Thieves going zero and three. The one saving grace that FlyQuest has is that I, uh, Dignitas and 100 Thieves do play each other in the last week of action in the LCS, but unless FlyQuest goes 3-0, then things are going to be real tricky, because again, even going 3-0, that means Dig or 100 Thieves have to go 1-2, and two, and that's assuming there's no Miracle Runs out of Immortals, so a lot of work still uh, to be done for FlyQuest if they want any chance of making it into that top 8. Dignitas sitting in that eight spot ahead of those two squads and the change from Diamond to Poom didn't work out. Uh, they haven't picked up a win with Poom. It was an 0-3 weekend for them and I call it weekend. I'm still used to that, but obviously 0-3 week for Dignitas against... Oh, excuse me. I mean, really the Immortals loss is the one that's painful. That's the team they should be beating and they did and that was... Why they're climbing down these ranks outside of top five. I think we had them as high as five. Maybe, I don't think they quite reached number four, but everyone else trending in the right direction, except for Dig when you're talking about those top eight status. Even a squad like 100 Thieves, who not looking great, but saved disaster, at least finally got a positive, a win against TSM, a win against an actual good looking team so far. Doublelift still has that XTSM buff, obviously, as uh, he looks great in that win. Closer continues to just be on tank duty in this jungle meta, and this team goes about as far as Quint's performance. Excuse me, this is what the LCS does. It just keeps making me yawn. Uh, <laughs> but Quint looks okay in TSM. Uh, in the TSM matchup, Sunday continues to be the most consistent member of this squad right alongside Double Lift. So, still not feeling great about 100 Thieves by any means whatsoever, but enough to bump them up a spot into number seven. The shakiest of the shakers on this bottom half of the list is 100% evil geniuses as they come crashing down outside of that top five. Four losses in a row now for the boys from EG. And the problem is, it's not even just four losses. It's the fashion that these guys are losing. Across those four games, they've only managed to get three turrets total. Less than one turret per game they're averaging. And all you have to do is look at the gold deficits that they were at. Losing these games, 19,000, 11,000, 17,000, and 9K. Only one of those losses do they end the game with less than a 10K gold deficit. So not only are they losing, they're getting absolutely pumped on the rift. Nothing really, even Cloud the Cloud9 game, they had an okay early game, but they look completely lost what to do with any kind of lead in the mid game. So 
definitely some concerns now for EG as we see them struggling, especially in that mid game. And I mean, because they had such a solid start to the year, they're still, you know, fine for playoffs, obviously locked in, but ooh, in the best of, they really need to turn some things around. We are far removed from when we were talking about JoJo picking up an MVP potentially as, you know, Started the week by getting absolutely slapped by Gory in one of the biggest one-sided mid lane matchups that we've seen. And didn't get much better as the week progressed. So still obviously opportunity to uh, save face and feel a lot better about this squad heading into playoffs. But right now they slide outside of that top five. And that's because you got teams going the reverse end of that losing streak for EG as NRG picks up their fourth win in a row and yes it maybe wasn't the easiest schedule but far and away most impressive win of the week for them goes to the final one day three action against golden guardians and this is the first game it feels like and we're second last week of the regular season where you saw big dokes finally show up this was the gangplank game where he had a fantastic performance he was the standout performer for NRG when they were still CLG, uh, you know, praise the faithful. Last year, he was the standout guy. More often than not, we haven't seen that as much here in the summer split, but absolutely got it in that GG matchup. FBI and Ignar slowly coming into their own. And Palafox, honestly, individually, probably his best split in the LCS, I would say, at the very least. So uh, seeing this progression out of NRG, great to see, especially for a squad that was getting perfect gamed in week one. They're throwing 10K gold leads left, right, and center. So seeing this bounce back and really see themselves, affirming themselves as a legit playoff squad, you love to see it. You love to see TSM, even though the win streak ended. They had that loss to 100 Thieves. They'd won four in a row at that point. Insanity and APA, another guy we're going to talk about. Legit all-pro conversation. Wild Turtle just had the... Double if debuff, you know? Double if it doesn't even matter how well Wild Turtle plays. Double if just seems to always win that head-to-head. -head. So that's how they're losing that one. But an impressive win against Team Liquid. Still things looking good about TSM. And you're feeling good about them heading towards playoffs in this final week of action. Who knows how high uh, they're going to climb. They have a pretty tough schedule. FlyQuest C9 and Evil Geniuses. Um, you know, FlyQuest you would think is a tough schedule, but... That's a 10th place team, or 9th place team, excuse me, and EG is a team on the slide, so easily could see TSM going 2-1 and one and finishing with pretty favorable seeding in the LCS, but um, Hauntzer, I mean, he hasn't been standout, but he's been steady enough, it's really just been insanity is the featured carry for this squad, and Wild Turtle has been pretty reliable, Chime and, the, and Boogie as the playmakers, things looking good for TSM, Team Liquid also gets a bump up because we have the fall of Evil Geniuses. And despite that loss to TSM, it was a classic TL loss where they had a huge lead. They had everything in their wheelhouse to close this game out, just weren't able to get it done. But a win against Cloud9 earlier in the week and a win sandwiched after that TSM loss uh, makes you see the potential for this TL squad with APA now in the mid lane because... This is a team that, when they sort out the kinks of throwing away a 7k gold lead and losing the game, if you include all the games that Team Liquid has had a 5k plus gold lead, they'd be right up there with Cloud9 in terms of overall record. A couple more wins to their name. So there's, there's still potential there for Team Liquid. And again, as EG slumps, TL slots right into that three spot pretty nicely and this is a team that i wouldn't want to draw in a best of five as we roll on towards playoffs i'd still rather draw them than the top two on this list who remain the same from last week golden guardians despite the loss to nrg still you know they had the dominant 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 that's three dominants win against evil geniuses followed that up with a win against immortals um and I mean, what more can you say about this squad? Stix A looks more comfortable on some 80 carries than others. The Kaisa wasn't quite there. He looks much better on the Aphelios and the Jinx, things like that. But Kaisa pretty damn meta right now. So that's something that I'm sure he's more than capable of playing. Gory and River, 
both of these guys I think are legit in the MVP conversation uh, so far Gory as he dismantled Jojo and EG and really had a fantastic week from start to finish those guys phew, right up there for front runners for MVP because both Golden Guardians then you look ahead of them at Cloud9 who lost to TL but still feeling good about them there's so many star-studded players on this squad it's hard to pick an MVP I know Berserker picked it up earlier for Cloud9 but Berserker is a guy you could talk about. Jimenez, Blabber, all playing at high levels right now. It, it honestly seems like Cloud9 is at a level similar to G2 in the LEC where they're too good for the LCS and LEC respectively and not good enough to play internationally in a little bit of the limbo zone. We'll see in playoffs if Cloud9 can truly be tested. We saw Golden Guardians renew that rivalry by getting a regular season head-to-head -head win, but still feeling just a little bit better about Cloud9 right now than GG, but both of the top two looking strong and sturdy heading into the final week of regular season action in the LCS, but that is it today, my beautiful beautiful people. Thank you all so much for watching as always, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.